to the world, U.S. Special Forces are now stationed just six miles off China's coast. With their Damn. presence accidentally leaked, China's responded with the expected levels of outrage. Yet the U.S. military has refused to back down, and in fact has now confirmed the presence of American special operators in Taiwan will now be permanent. The move Jeez. was controversial, to say the least, and China has labeled it as an act of provocation. Yet it's not Taiwan that's threatening to invade China, but rather the other way around, and hence why members of the U.S. Army's Green Berets, along with other operators, will now be permanently stationed on at least two islands just off the Chinese coast. I like that. So because of the threat from China raiding Taiwan, they came to be like, to police them. And China's getting stressed thinking, why are you here policing us? But if no one's, if America don't do it, let's be honest, no one can do it. No, they can't. And the thing is, America, their weaponry is just Next on a level. whole other level. Yeah. As big as China no is now, can they can't, them. still can't compete. Yeah. There's no way. U.S. service members have visited Taiwan before, but this is the first time that America is putting boots on the ground permanently, and all under the invitation of Taiwan itself. Funding for a permanent oh, presence was secured under the 2023 National Defense Authorization Act, and it's unknown just how many American soldiers now make Taiwan a part of their duty rotation. What we do know so far is that there are U.S. soldiers on at least two sites in Taiwan, the island of Penghu and the island of Kinmen which is just six miles off China's coast. The Department of Defense has remained tight-lipped on the purpose of these special forces, though it did confirm that one of their goals is to help train Taiwan's own special and amphibious forces. Green Berets specialize in defending against enemy special forces, making them ideally suited to the task of preparing That's Taiwan cool. for the inevitable insertion of Chinese special forces operators if a conflict ever sparks up in the region. A major focus of the Green Beret mission in Taiwan is preparing to counter China's special forces threat, as well as identify and neutralize infiltrators and sabotage agents. This is a major concern given that Taiwan intelligence regularly discovers Chinese collaborators or infiltrators in the Taiwanese military. The but China are a bit like, the way they do their stuff is a bit dodgy, like look at the Chinese spy balloon. They let off a balloon in the US that was a full-on spy balloon. and. It was just floating around for however long. And look at what they've done with TikTok. Yeah, the reason why the spyware. US are banning it, there's yeah. so much spyware found, it's getting banned because they're literally taking data of Americans and they're tracking Americans using this software. Oh, God. Like they're, they're, they're doing too much. They're doing too much. They they wish they were the number one superpower in the world. They're not, though. They want to be. Yeah. And, they're, and their alliances with Russia is very strong. With how much money the US is pumping into their you know, military forces, you, no one can they catch will up. always be number one. But China wants to be number one. They're trying hard. And that's why they're getting annoyed that the US is here. Mm. General population or even its government. For its part, China has launched an aggressive campaign of gray zone warfare against Taiwan in an effort to sway public opinion or help set the stage for an invasion. Chinese infiltrators stir up the Taiwanese population, with little success to date, but also gather detailed information on Taiwan's defenses. In case of a war, it's expected that the first phase of an invasion will include a massive sabotage campaign across the islands, all performed in an attempt to slow or hamstring Taiwan's initial response to Chinese incursions. Political and military leaders are also the target of Chinese special forces. Plans show that specialized kill teams will be sent to assassinate Taiwan's leadership Damn. as part of China's spearhead during its invasion of Taiwan. Here, the Green Berets are well suited for helping train Taiwan's forces, with Green Berets typically providing security for American VIPs during wartime scenarios. I like that the US are like training them up as well, so that way if we're not there, you guys are. You guys got more, this. You guys got this worst yeah. case. During Desert Storm, American General Norman Schwarzkopf, who oversaw the entire campaign, had his own security detail of Green Berets to thwart Iraqi attempts to assassinate him. Many in the U.S. military believe that a Chinese invasion of Taiwan is inevitable, and recent reports state that China will likely be fully prepared for such an invasion by 2027. The initial Damn. estimate was that China would capitalize on political turmoil after the 2024 American election to invade by 2025. 
but a massive corruption scandal amongst the People's Liberation Army rocket force seems to have significantly eroded Chinese President Xi Jinping's confidence in his military. The scandal has ensnared numerous senior PLARF and other military officials, including two now former commanders of the rocket force. Oh, no it's way. also revealed that it's possible a number of Chinese missile silos had faulty doors that prevented their missiles from being fired. Made in China, hey? As they say. Made in China, boys. <laughs> that's what happens when it's made in China. And that's why they can't be number one. Yeah. They, they, they go for quantity over quality. It's true. It, yeah. Strength in numbers, but their quality is trash. I think they're, in terms of people, they've Population. got more people in the forces yeah. as well, isn't they? They've got more people, everything. Compared to but United the US, States. But the US, the state's got quality. Yes, Their tech they do. is higher. Like, yeah. they only ha get the best of the best. Yeah. A revelation supported by the well-documented corruption and poor quality work of Chinese <laughs> construction firms. Said. The PLARF is the key to any invasion of Taiwan, as China's rocket force is tasked with neutralizing U.S. regional power. Via long-range ballistic missiles, China aims to shut down American airfields across the Pacific for long enough to successfully land on Taiwan. Long-range anti-ship missiles will target U.S. Navy surface action groups, with the specific goal of sinking American carriers. The PLARF's entire purpose we know is basically to enable China freedom of action in the Taiwan Strait by keeping U.S. naval and air forces at bay. But if this specialized force is incapable of doing its job, China stands little chance of successfully landing on Taiwan. China's corruption scandal may have bought the U.S. and Taiwan a few more years, but either way, America is taking the threat of a Chinese invasion more seriously than it ever has before in history. Many of you know, it is if China invade Taiwan and they're successful, it's just going to build their confidence and get them more gassed. Mm. U.S. being there and putting their boots in the ground, saying, "You know, I ain't doing this on our watch." Yeah. Like and China right now they're a bit like fifty fifty if they can do if their technology because is good enough. Because if they and stuff, do, then the Americans will be on them. Yeah, and they won't allow them to do it. Yeah, America will be flying there yeah. quick. But Especially if they with do those and they get and they, they get have. away with it, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, we could do more stuff now. And of course, they'll try and take over other countries. Yeah, exactly. As well. Yeah, that's what will happen. Of the intelligence and military community agree that invasion is all but inevitable, and until now, America has retained a position of strategic ambiguity. However, in an effort to deter an invasion in the first place, American President Joe Biden publicly affirmed twice that he would defend Taiwan. That's good. White House press staff were quick to walk the comments back, creating even more ambiguity about the U.S.'s real intentions and inserting doubt into Chinese calculations. Though the presence of U.S. special forces so close to China leaves little room for interpretation, as America gears up for new weapon sales to Taiwan, it's likely that these operators aren't there just to train in countering China's own special forces and sabotage or infiltration attempts, but also to help train Taiwanese troops in new tools the U.S. has made available for purchase. Nice. Amongst oh, these yeah. is the yeah. Black Hornet. These micro-drones have seen action in Ukraine, where Ukrainian special operators have utilized them to conduct covert surveillance against Russian forces. The small drones are perfect for local reconnaissance and include three cameras, one facing forward, one facing down, and one canted at a 45-degree angle from the nose. The powerful little drone is even strong enough to fly in harsh winds, despite nice. its tiny size Quality. of 6 by 1 you. inches <laughs> and a total weight of 18 grams. Wow. Its loiter time is around 20 to 25 minutes, which is the same amount of time it takes to recharge its battery. Therefore, with two drones, one can be ready for flight as soon as its partner returns from a mission. The drone even has night vision and infrared capability, nice. perfect for recon at night. Very little has been publicly confirmed about the specific mission and training that America's Green Berets are undertaking in Taiwan, but their location on outlying islands is a strong hint of other aspects of their mission. The proximity to China's coast could hint at the preparation for Taiwan's own special forces to conduct counter-infiltrations into China itself in case of hostilities. Any invasion of Taiwan would take months to prepare for, as troops are moved to the coast and ships are assembled. This gives Taiwanese special forces an opportunity to conduct sabotage missions inside China itself in an effort to slow the invasion or delay it, given that tidal conditions of the Strait of Taiwan itself are only favorable for an invasion at two different times of the year, a delay caused by sabotage could delay an invasion long enough 
to make it politically not viable. Mm, Using clever. encrypted and jam-resistant communication links, special forces on these islands could direct long-range fires against Chinese vessels moving into the strait. This is a critical concern for China, and one that we know it's spent a lot of time worrying about. In case of war, U.S. Marines will be used to conduct amphibious landings on outlying islands across the strait and near China's coast. A structural reorganization of American Marines has now made them into a far more flexible and agile force, with the ability to deploy into outlying islands or seize them by force. They're literally police in there, which is good because if they don't police, who's going to do it? It's true. You can literally do anything. They can kill Taiwan thousands. can't people. do it. They don't have the facilities They'll to do it. They'll get killed. If they're they the don't ones have the skills. Attacked, they don't have the strength. Nothing. So, so it's like, good that there's got to be someone, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's good that America's there. Yeah. Because if they wasn't, it would be problematic. Yeah. And turn them into anti-ship missile bases with the help of tools like HIMARS. America's goal in the Pacific is to present China with more complications than it can resolve, overwhelming its ability to defend itself and its invasion forces. These Not islands could problems. also host mobile <laughs> air defense systems America. to harass the Chinese Air Force as it attempts to seize air superiority over the Strait and Taiwan itself. We've seen an example of how successful the aggressive use of air defenses can be in Ukraine, with the Navy deploying Patriot and NASA air defenses just behind the front line. The surprise move resulted in a brutal ambush of Russian aircraft that scored approximately a dozen downed aircraft, including Damn. very high-value and expensive airborne alert and control aircraft well behind the front lines. U.S. Special Forces on Taiwan itself would be critical to America's response to Chinese aggression. They would not only help Taiwan defend itself from Chinese Special Forces, but also help coordinate action between Taiwan's military and America's own. Their knowledge of American weapon systems would prove invaluable as Taiwan purchases ever greater numbers of them, and their ability to relay precise targeting data on Chinese forces to American strike capabilities would be crucial for the rapid and accurate destruction of invading forces and their support equipment. All this doesn't come without significant risk, though. In any invasion of Taiwan, it would put the U.S. service members in the direct line of fire. Yeah, for sure. Yet this was always going to be the case, as the war would predominantly play out between China's Navy and Air Force oh. against America's own Navy and Air Force. The addition of ground combat troops could prove politically contentious for Americans, especially if the nation elects an isolationist president or one with Chinese sympathies. However, the present course being charted by America does not indicate this will be the case. For the first time in U.S.-Taiwan relations, the island democracy has become the beneficiary of America's foreign military finance program. This is not a loan or a weapons purchase, but rather direct military assistance provided throughout history to various nations such as nice. Ukraine, Egypt, Afghanistan, and others. An $80 million transfer of weapons was meant to bolster Taiwan's defenses, with the I added know. side effect of boosting the domestic economy by creating a need to replace those same supplies. For decades, the U.S. has maintained a strategy of ambiguity on the Taiwan matter and refused to officially recognize the country so as to not anger China. In the past, U.S. arms sales to the nation were meant to ensure that it had enough weapons to defend itself, but not so much as to completely deteriorate relations with China. Mm -hmm. Yet, as many have observed, China's military advantage over Taiwan is now massive, and the old strategy no longer works. Taiwan needs direct military assistance and a significant amount of it, in order to deter the far more powerful and modern China from attempting an invasion. No one except senior U.S. and Taiwanese officials know exactly what weapons Taiwan is getting at the moment, but it's likely that it includes a healthy amount of Stinger short-range air defense missiles and Javelin anti-tank guided missiles, both of which have proven invaluable in Ukraine. They're good for defending because they're like anti anti um aircraft and anti-like ships as well. Mm. So good. But that $80 million was only the start, and shortly after, Taiwan placed an order for an additional $500 million oh in my new God. weapons on top of the aid package. The Navy They're like, we need to go in, like... <laughs> they got a taste of the... It's good. Though. Once they start, 80 yeah. mil, like, you know what? They probably were like, all right, let's do 80 mil. Yeah. They saw it, they tested it, said, nah, nah, we need more. Yeah, this is really good like, stuff. Like, let's this get is, more of This it. ain't made in China. This um, is made uh, in US. Yep, US soil. Went straight for 500 mil. Yeah. They said, fuck it all in. Mm -hmm. Life Nation is also sending two battalions of troops to train in the US, the first time that's happened since the oh, 1970s, wow. and before the US switched official recognition from Taiwan to China. 
Taiwan is in dire need of restructuring when it comes to its military in the face of growing Chinese aggression, and the US's aim is to help with that. Its main battle tanks are mostly aging Cold War models donated or sold by the US, and unlikely to offer much resistance against China's more modern tanks. It also has a critical shortfall of missile systems for both air defense and to counter Chinese armored vehicles, a problem the US is attempting to fix with ongoing arms sales but is also being affected by the need to send these same weapons to Ukraine. Taiwanese units are also They must be pulling, stretching themselves out a lot, the US, because like they said, they're getting a big orders from Taiwan, plus they want to help them, but then they have to sort Ukraine. But this, this is what I think, I don't know if someone commented in the comment section and they said like, when Trump, what, what Trump is trying to do if he becomes president, he's like not happy that the whole world is relying on the US too much and wants to not withdraw the support, but lower it because he thinks that everyone just wants the US to help them. And if they do, like, do you know what I mean? So he's trying to like force other countries to start putting money into their own militaries and not just rely on the US because there's only so much the US can support the world and they need to focus on their own shit as well. The thing is, I feel like because America, and I think it's down to the researchers, the scientists and everyone that's involved, they're weaponary. No other country has what they have. Yeah, but that's because they put money into it. Yeah. And they put development it's into it. It's the quality it. of the research. But the others well. can do that, but they're not choosing to. It's a choice. Do you, America done that because they're pumping billions into their thing. Trillions, even. The other countries, they're not doing that. And that for that reason, they're behind. Mm. They could hire geniuses. They just not put money as much money into it. And yeah. For that reason, they're losing. And also, they're probably putting the money elsewhere as well. And now that Taiwan's potentially going to get wiped out by China, now they're saying shit. We need Now we're going to do it because it's life and death. And if we yeah. don't, we're gone. Mm -hmm. So they're doing it as a last resort. But you should be doing that anyway. I get it's expensive and stuff. You know, put money in the economy. But look at the situation now. Mm -hmm. It's just... So hovering around 60% of their required manpower thanks to the reduction of military service from one year to just four months in 2013. Damn. To remedy this, Taiwan has reinstated a mandatory full year of service for all youth, but Ocean the nation people. faces significant problems on the training front that the U.S. is attempting to help rectify. Taiwanese citizens jokingly refer to this period of service as summer camp, and those interviewed say there's no regular training and they only practice firing 50-year-old rifles every two weeks. While American combat troops undergo rigorous training on marksmanship fundamentals, mm. such training has been lacking in the Taiwanese military, and there is little, if any, emphasis on physical fitness. All of these shortfalls are changing under immense pressure from the US. Good. War game after war game has shown that China inevitably lands its forces on Taiwan, even if its amphibious fleet suffers heavy losses. This has led the US to pressure Taiwan into investing far more resources into its army, which Washington says should be prepared to fight China, not just on the beaches, but in the cities, towns, and jungles yeah, as well. Everything. The strategic reality is that due to its proximity to China and the need for the US Navy and Air Force to operate from so far away, Taiwan needs to be fully prepared for the inevitable incursion of Chinese ground forces. Taiwan's army thus needs to be able to hold the island's political and economic centers long enough for the US and allied forces to destroy the Chinese Navy and Air Force. This would leave Chinese army forces on the island cut off from resupply and inevitably forced to surrender. Leading the way in helping retrain Taiwan's army are US Special Forces, and their permanent deployment hints that this is not their only mission. So do you think it's good that Taiwan's finally decided to invest in their military? I'm sure they waited this long. Yeah, especially with conflict with it's China, their neighbor, neighboring countries. I yeah. mean, China's massive, and you just now, only now, you've decided. Especially you're such a small country, small island. Anyone can just go after them at any point. Yeah, they need to defend themselves. And even their training as well. They said that they just relax. It's like a holiday. No cardio. We've no watched nothing. how... We have watched the... The young soldiers, what yeah. they go through. We've reacted to them and they are In proper. the Navy, in the Army. Oh, my God. The Marines. As soon as they get off the bus, come on. Time is ticking. <laughs> yeah, they go for real, proper training. Like these discipline. are... Oh, yeah, just relax. Shoot, learn in how to shoot weeks, these couple we'll guns. Learn how to shoot. That's what you need to know. But this is the thing now... Obviously, luckily, America are there to support China. I'm uh, not trying Taiwan now, and but it puts a lot of pressure on China because they're probably thinking 
the longer we leave us take trying to take over, the stronger, more prepared Taiwan is. But then we can't do it now because America is there. But then they might just get to a point where it's like, we have to do it now. We're never going to be able to do it with with or without America. Because the longer, do you know what I mean? The more prepared they're going to be, the more weaponry, the more uh, trained, the more for everything they're going to be. And so they're China. The concern is what if China just says, you know what, regardless of America being there, we're just going to have to do it and go all out. I don't think they They'll be stupid too. It'll yeah, be the dumbest shit. But will. after the Iran Navy situation that we watched, where the Iranians tried to blow up America's boats for, and they carried on even though they're getting destroyed, uh, there's a lot of stupidity in the world, and China might make a dumb decision. Who knows? I don't think they will. Thanks for they thanks for recommending the video, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Keep suggesting videos. We, this was a suggestion we've reacted to. For now, peace out. Bye.